morning ladies and gentlemen. We're going to do 13.5 today, the Law of Signs. So our objectives, forgot to put a little box around it, are to use the Law of Signs to solve non-right triangles when we're given either angle, angle, side, or angle, side, angle. So I drew some examples of angle, angle, side, and angle, side, angle. So angle, angle, side means that the side is not included in between the two angles doesn't mean that it has to be an acute triangle. It could be an obtuse triangle, so angle, angle, side. The side just has to be not included. And then here's a couple of examples of angle, side, angle. So notice it goes angle, the side is included in between the two angles, and then angle, and then it goes angle, side, angle. And again, the side is included, okay? So the law of sines, and then the next day we're gonna get the law of cosines, is how we solve for either angles or sides when we don't have a right triangle because all the math that we have done um, in previous years and this year has always been done on a right triangle. So now we're going to have a way of solving for pieces, either angles or sides, when it's not a right triangle. All right, so let me give you an example triangle. It can be any kind of triangle. We wouldn't want to use a right triangle because then we could just use our right triangle trig. But let's say this is angle A and then its opposite side is little a. Angle B, its opposite side is a little b. And then angle C and its opposite side is a little c. So here's what the law of sines says, okay? It says that the sine of angle A is the side A as the side of angle B is the little b, as the sine of angle C is the little c. All right, so all the law of sines does is allow you to solve. I have to take the ratios two at a time, so it doesn't matter which two I use, that is just dependent on what tri the triangle information is. So I would use either of these three ratios two at a time. So let's just do some examples because I think that's the easiest way to learn the law of sines. So our directions are gonna say solve the triangle ABC. And you're gonna be given that C is 107 degrees, B is 25 degrees, and little b is 15. So it's an obtuse triangle. Remember I can only have one obtuse angle. So I'm gonna call this C and I'm gonna label it 107 degrees and then I don't know little c, I know angle b is 25 degrees, and I know that side b is 15, so there's big A and little a, okay? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for angle a, because all I have to do is subtract from 180. So angle a is going to equal 180 minus the 107 that was given and minus the 25 that was given, and when I do that math, I get that angle a is 48 degrees, okay? So I'm going to add it to my drawing just because it makes life a little bit easier. But when you report your answers for an exam or a quiz, it would have to go in the answer column, not on your diagram. All right. <clears throat> so I need to find angle C, or sorry, side C and side A. So I'm going to start with, it doesn't matter which ratio. So I'm going to say the sine of angle B is the little b as the sine of big C is the little c. And I'm going to substitute in the information that I know. So I'm going to get the sine of 25 is to little b, which is 15, is equal to the sine of 107 over little c. And now I can solve for little c. I can solve for little c by cross multiplying. Okay. So I'm going to get c sine 25 is equal to 15 sine 107. I'm going to divide both sides by the sine of 25 so that I can solve my equation for C. So I'm gonna get C is equal to 15 sine 107 divided by the sine of 25. So let me get my handy dandy grabber. It was hiding. And let me show you this one in your calculator, okay? So first thing I'm gonna check is make sure that my calculator is in degrees, okay? And I think maybe you can see both. There's my, this is the math that I'm going to put in. 
always want to check and make sure you're in the right mode. So I'm going to do 15 sine 107, put that in parentheses, divided by the sine of 25. You need to close your parentheses, and I get that little c is 33.942, and whatever the units happen to be. Okay. All right, so now I have one other piece to find, and I'm going to do it kind of in this space over here. I need to find A. So I like to use not things that I have found in case I make a mistake. So I'm going to use, to find A, I'm going to use B and A. So I'm going to say the sine of A is to little a as the sine of B is to little b. And again, I'm doing those two because since I found C, if I made a mistake on C and I use it again, then I can compound my mistake. So I want to not use what I have found. All right, so I'm going to do the sine of 48 is to A as the sine of 25 is to 15, cross, multiply. So I get A sine 25, oops, I'm getting down near the bottom, is equal to 15 sine 48 solve for A, so A is going to be 15 sine 48. I divided both sides by the sine of 25. Again, being careful when I put that in my calculator with my parentheses, and I'm going to get that A is equal to 26.376. Okay, so now I have everything I need. And then in the answer column on an exam, so I'll squish this in right over here, I would say that angle A is 48 degrees, always using my units, um, little a is 26.376, and little c is 33.942. And then that would be what I would report in my answer column. Alrighty. So let's move on. Law of Signs is actually fairly polite. It's not a difficult process. Okay? Alrighty. Next example. Sorry, I turned my page too early. Okay, is always going to say solve the triangle, and I'm going to be, there's triangle ABC, I'm going to be given that capital B or angle B is 34 degrees, capital C is 100 degrees, and little b is equal to 8, and I'm going to put centimeters this time, okay, so I have a unit to work with. All right, so I'm going to draw a little diagram. Again, I have an obtuse triangle, so I'm going to draw myself a little obtuse triangle, I'm going to label it, so here's C at 100 degrees, here's B at 34 degrees. I can find A pretty easily. Um, side B is 8 centimeters. I don't know little a and I don't know little c, okay? Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is find angle A. So angle A is 180 degrees minus the 100 degrees and the 34 degrees. So we get the angle A is 46 degrees. So I'm going to add that to my diagram. I always circle things that I've added so I don't get confused about what I've added and what's been given. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to solve for is little a, just because I could have solved for little c first. doesn't matter, but I'm going to choose to do little a. So I'm going to say the sine of a is to a as the sine of b is to little b. And again, I'm choosing to use B because I know both pieces. I know the angle and its sine. Substitute in all my information. So I get the sine of 46 is to A as the sine of 34 is to little b, which was 8. I'm going to cross multiply. Okay, so that says that A sine 34 is equal to 8 sine 46. So then A is going to equal 8 sine 46 divided by the sine of 34. Crunch on my calculator, and when I do that math, math I get that A is 10.291 centimeters. And it would be centimeters because it's the length of a side. Alrighty, so the next piece that I need to solve for is little c, and I'm going to use angle c and angle b again. I don't want to use information that I found in case I screwed something up. So I'm going to set this one up. I'm going to say the sine of b is to b as the sine of c is to little c. Okay, so I put in what I know. 
So I'm going to say the sine of 34 is to 8 as the sine of 100 is to little c cross multiply. So I get c sine 34 is equal to 8 sine 100. Solve for c and I get that little c is 8 sine 100 divided by the sine of 34. Crunch on my calculators and I get that c is 14.089 centimeters. So now I know that little c is 14.089 centimeters. Okay, And then I'm just going to write the only other thing that I found, angle a was 46 degrees. Okay, And there's my problem. So it's actually really simple. And the law of sines is kind of cool that way. The law of sines does have an area where it's deficient, but we're not going to choose to talk about that in this course. We'll save it for pre-calc. All right, so the next thing that I want to talk about is a new way to calculate the area of a triangle. Okay, so it's a new handy dandy little formula. Okay, and I have to be given, um, in this particular case, I have to be given angle side angle. Okay, so I have to be given angle side angle will be my given information, meaning that the side is included in between the two angles. If I'm not given angle side angle, this particular method doesn't work. So I'm going to write it in my shorthand and then I'll give you the official version. version okay, so the area is going to equal one half the length of the side times the length of the other side times the sine of the included angle. Okay, so that's the way that I remember it. I don't remember all the letters. This is just my shortcut way for remembering the formula. So it says that the area is equal to one half side, side, sine of the included angle. So here's the official formula. It tells you that the area is equal to one half B, that's a C, sine of A, that would be in the included angle, or it's equal to one half AC sine b, again depending on what you've been given, or one half ab sine c. So that's why I don't remember all the little letters, I just remember that I have to be given angle side angle and it's one half side side sine. That's how I remember the formula. Alrighty, so let's do a couple of quick little examples. It's actually a really nice little formula. So my example is going to say calculate the area of a triangle, okay? So let me give you your given information, okay? So here's going to be A, B, and C, and I'm going to be given that little a is 10 centimeters, I'm going to give that little b is 14 centimeters, and angle C is 46 degrees. So if I add that information to my drawing, I know that this side is 10 centimeters, little b is 14 centimeters, and c is 46 degrees. So notice that this satisfies the rule that I have to be given angle side angle because I go, sorry, oh I wrote it down wrong, my bad. We have to be given side angle side, okay? Alrighty. Oopsie. So we have to be given side angle side, so here's side angle side, meaning that the angle has to be included. <laughs> Haven't had enough coffee, obviously, this morning. All right, so my formula says it's going to be one half side, side, sine of the included angle. So just for your information, this would probably be the way that I would report the formula on a formula sheet if it were me, but this is the way that I remember it. So my here's my area. I'm going to have one half times 14 times 10 times the sine of 46 degrees. I can do half of 14 is 7. So if I simplify this, this is going to be 70 sine 46. Do that in my handy dandy calculator. And I'm going to get that the area is equal to 50.354 centimeters squared. And remember, area is always a square unit and that would be my solution. So it's actually a really nice way to calculate the area of a triangle. And remember I gave you wrong information, so once I saw my diagram I realized it was wrong. It has to be given side angle side.
All right, I have one more example for you of the area, and then we'll get to your problems. So nice and short video for today. Again, I wanna calculate the area of the triangle, and I'm gonna be given that little a is 19 feet, little c is eight feet, and angle B is 75 degrees. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna draw my little triangle because it helps me a ton just to see what's going on. So I'm gonna label this A, B, and C. Add the information that I know. This is 75 degrees. I know that little A is 19 feet, and I know that little C is eight feet. Notice I've been given side, angle, side. Therefore, I can use my handy dandy formula which says one half side, side, sine. Okay, and that remember that's the sine of the included angle. So my area is gonna equal a half times eight times 19 times the sine, 75 degrees, half of eight is four, and then I can do that math in my grapher, and I'm gonna get 73.410 feet squared and that's the area of my triangle. So it's actually a really nice little formula if you're given the right kind of stuff. All right, so let me give you your problems. Nice short lecture today. Fairly straightforward concept. So these, the first set of directions says solve the triangle using the law of sines, okay? Right, let me scoop my paper a little bit so I have some room. So for the first triangle, you're gonna know that angle B is 102 degrees. You're gonna know that little C, oops, sorry, big C is 43 degrees, and little B is 21 centimeters, okay? Number two, angle A is gonna be 55 degrees, angle B is 64 degrees, and I know that C is equal to 34 inches, okay? The third triangle, I know that angle B is 56 degrees, little b is 17 um, meters, and little c is 14 meters. So solve those three triangles. The next set says calculate the area of the triangle, okay? First problem, you're gonna be given that angle A is 68 degrees, little b is 13 feet, and little c is seven feet, okay? Number five, you're gonna be given that angle C is 96 degrees, that little a is seven centimeters, and little b is 15 centimeters, and calculate the area. Alrighty, that's it for today. Good luck with your problems, and I will see you tomorrow in class.